Welcome to this new video where we are once again going to take a sneak peek at how async and await are going to work in Swift. So this time what we are going to do is that we are going to take a function from foundation. So it's going to be the function data task from URL session. And we are going to implement an async version of this function that can then be called using the await keyword. And we are going to see how it changes the call site, but also how simple it is to implement this async version of an existing function. But before we begin, if you haven't seen the first video of this series, I strongly recommend that you pause and follow the link that is appearing at the top of the screen and go watch this video. Otherwise, I'm afraid you're not going to understand all the basics and this video is going to be very complicated for you to understand. That being said, let's get started. So as you can see here, I have implemented a network call. So I am calling a sample API of OpenMotherMap. So basically this URL, it returns a payload that is a static JSON file. And in order to perform the network call, I am using the function data task of the class URL session. So it's the standard way to make a network call on iOS. So I'm sure we are all familiar with it. But just in case, the way that this method works is that we give it a URL as its input, and then it's going to perform the network call asynchronously and it will call a completion handler in order for us to deal with the result of the network call. So here in the completion handler what we are doing is that we are parsing the data and we are printing it to the console. So pretty simple if I run this code I'm going to have a JSON being displayed in the console. Now what I want to do in this video is to take this function right here the method data task and to create an async version of this function so that we can then call it without needing a completion handler but just using await and assigning the result to a local variable just like we would be doing it with any other regular Swift function. So how can we do it? Well, first we're going to need to implement an extension on URL session. So let's make this extension on URL session. Then we need to write the signature of the function. So it's going to be a function called data task. It's going to take as its argument a URL. So it takes a URL. Now I've just said this function is going to be async, so I'm going to add the async keyword after the list of the argument. And finally for the return type, well what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take what are the inputs of the completion handler in this version of the function and I'm going to turn them into the return value. So I'm going to have a tuple as my return value. The first argument is going to be an optional data. The second one is going to be an optional URL response and the last one is going to be an optional error. Now we need to implement the function itself. And in order to implement it, we're going to do just like we did in the first video. We're going to use the function with unsafe continuation. So remember this function, we call it, it takes a completion handler that takes a continuation as its argument. And we are going to call this continuation using the method resume on it, giving it a value. And this way it will return the call of with unsafe continuation. Basically, this is a way to transform an async function that uses a completion handler into an async function that uses the mechanism of async await. So now what are we going to do inside the completion handler of with unsafe continuation? Well, we are just going to call our regular function. So I'm going to call data task on self because remember we are in an extension of URL session. So for the URL, well, I give it the one that I will get as an argument and then I need to provide a completion handler. So I'm going to take the same argument that I had in my call site just above and inside I'm going to take my continuation. I'm going to call the method resume on it and when I resume, I'm going to return a tuple that will have the data, the response and the error. And finally, I need to remember that I must also call resume in order to actually trigger the network call. And that's it. We've actually implemented our async version of data task. So as you can see, it wasn't complicated at all. It's just a wrapper around the existing function. And now we can call it. So to call it, I'm going to take the first call site and we're going to rework it using the new function. So I'm going to paste it here. All right, just going to change the name. Now, since we are going to call an async function, well, remember we need to annotate it with at async handler. So here, the first line we get the URL. It doesn't need to change. This one can stay the same. But starting on this line, things are going to change because we're no longer going to have a completion handler. So I'm going to take the content of the completion handler. I'm going to take it out and just write it inside the body of the function. Because remember, the advantage of using async await is that we no longer need to nest code inside completion handler. So I can also remove 
the call to resume here. Basically, I can remove my entire compression handler. I'm just going to copy the list of the arguments. You're going to see why. So I removed the compression handler and now I need to mark my call site with await because I am calling an async function. So I mark it with await and then I need to store the result of the call. And in order to store it, well, I'm going to store it in a tuple like this. So you can see that now I have a compiler warning because I'm actually indeed never using the response or the error. So I can actually mark them with an underscore instead of a name of variable in order to state to the compiler that yes, I don't care about these two return values. I only care about the data. And as you can see, now our call site has been successfully reworked. So we are no longer using a function that uses a compression handler. Instead, we use the async version we have defined just here. So we call it using await. We store its result inside a tuple because this is what the async function returns. And then we can use the content of this tuple in the body of the function just below. And we don't need to nest anything inside the compression handlers. So our code has become a little bit easier to read than before. So that's all for this third video about async await. What you've seen in this video is that it's actually very easy to implement a wrapper around an existing asynchronous function that works with a compression handler in order to make it work with async await. And so, of course, we can expect Apple to give us an implementation of data tasks that is going to work with async just out of the box. But for functions that either wouldn't be bridged or that would be part of our code base and we would need to bridge ourselves, what we've seen is that it's actually going to be very easy to do it. And I'm sure that in the case where you have a lot of function, you wouldn't even need to write it by hand. You could definitely use a tool like Sorcery in order to have the code generated for you. Now, you know how things go on YouTube, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. You can do all of that thing. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.